our bit is kind of the upstream, uh, you know, poppy uh, production, and the heroin in the labs. Uh, cyber. Uh, we so, okay, how can we use mobile devices to kind of some of the recon and intelligence? And how do you think that the sophisticated Navy bombers, as well as uh, border crossers? So kind of keeping the context, I think of uh, 2000, early 2000s, What's the interdiction, right? Uh, as we talk to SMEs, the eradication doesn't work. It doesn't work in Colombia. So our our recommendation here would be maybe what kind of intelligence can we supply, uh, supply to the Iranians to help them do their job? Maybe not uh, direct military assistance, but some act of you know, stop stemming this flow uh, and uh, you know, getting some kind of collaboration. Let all the other politics go on, but at least help them with this problem because there's a mutual interest. So I'll show you some of how we're kind of using phones uh, to gather the information. So the first part is, you know, we can do all kinds of modeling and simulation, but at the end of the day, all models are wrong, some are useful. Uh, so we also say, you have a, a fantastic conference with a lot of intelligence in the room, how do you gather that? So this is like a crowdsourcing uh, example of an app. So what we're going to do here is uh, we're going to go ahead and launch our app here. And this is just a, a URL, so there's no installation of software. And what we're demonstrating in our stack here is the ability for anything that we're doing here on this device, this device is on a different network, cellular networks, um, it doesn't matter. So what we can do is, as I want to fly to a position, I'm going to move my little dot here in Afghanistan. I want to go say, what do the poppy fields look like in this location? That just moved to Earth. That could be all around the world somewhere else. And that could, or that could be a command to a UAV if you move to that position. Notice, too, that this web browser is updating in real time where I just move here. That's not required. There's no, it's not the traditional database back end. It's a public and subscribe event back end. Notice it's all, uh, you know, I'm over here, I'm moving this around, okay, so, so now we'll just use this uh, on the larger suit. And then this is the crowdsourcing aspect to say, you know, where do you think, you know, using whatever heuristics you want, um, you know, maybe some people look at rivers, other people look at, you know, green areas, where do you think poppy fields might be, um, you know, kind of in, in, in larger country, Kandahar's here, Helmut's here, a couple of and so what we can do is uh, put a poppy field someplace. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, oh, uh, sorry. Oh, okay, okay. sorry. Okay. Uh, no, so we put one here, and then maybe I'll put another one over here. Um, yeah, sorry. So we can also now put it maybe where a super lab is. And uh, now I'll submit a vote. And uh, the Army will establish some kind of confidence level in the answer. And what we have here, in kind of real time, so once I submit this, that vote actually just went in in real time into this heat map where we think things are. And this is also now a parsable, uh, so if I can say, where does the Navy think the, the labs are and the, and, the, and the poppy fields? So now we're looking at all, well, let me just look at the fields, you know, the poppy fields or the Coast Guard, where do they think they are? Right, so this is kind of a crowdsourcing example. So we just saw where our votes were. And now this is actually the collective intelligence of this conference. And if you kind of look at down in here in Helmet and uh, Kandahar, you know, that's where, when we look at the UN reports, that's where all the eradications are happening. So if we look at, so, so this is kind of the crowdsourcing aspect. Now we just want to show you a little bit of the um, sand table aspect. And this is kind of how to communicate out to people, kind of uh, situational awareness, about training, <laughs> reaching out to the farmers. So uh, this 
assume, have you done sand table exercises before? Or you've seen them uh, recently. Uh, um, so what we're doing is saying sand tables are great. Uh, in the past, we've done them in this kind of way, you know, coming uh, kind of out the fire service. Um, you know, they kind of borrowed from the Marines and the Army uh, this kind of concept of sand tables. But they, you know, they do stuff like this, where they get the multi-agencies together, uh, state forestry, make some arbitrary terrain. Maybe you want to uh, practice a firefight between two mountains and you have to approach the village. But instead of just having this, you have all the richness of GIS and all the ESRI data and all the IBM data coming in uh, as well. So here's, so now we'll take this into uh, this mode here. So now, we'll, now, so this is the last bit of the thing we're showing is, this was crowdsourcing for information, and now we're going to do kind of a little bit more terrain analysis. Yeah. Uh -huh. So if we know nothing, so this is a, a kind of orienting you, this is a, political boundaries here of uh, Afghanistan. Uh, so Iran's over here, Kandahar and Helmut province down here, coming into Pakistan, Xinjiang and all Tibet uh, over in here. And so what we're going to do now is saying, if we knew nothing, uh, well, well, first of all, we also have other, uh, like satellite imagery, elevation data, and this also, by the way, can be controlled by a phone. You know, so, and everyone can have their, another thing was authentication, is so if you come to the table, and someone else comes to the table, that means your imagery is available their eyes only when you're in the room. You leave, uh, and, and, and imagine also cross-force. So imagine you had to collaborate with an Iranian team. You could have two projectors in the room, both projecting down, uh, calibrated together, and you're sharing a map, but your IT is not touching. It's just projection. So you can hand them a projector and say, get your guys to project your stuff, we'll project our stuff, let's share information, but we don't have to touch. What about the drug problem? What about the drug problem? Yeah. Yeah. I think you have a shared interest. Absolutely. <laughs> but, uh, I'm, I'm a couple. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, so we're going to do some terrain analysis here. So here's uh, the topography from uh, Esri. Here's the elevation. So now we're going to do some two derived uh, rasters. One is given the elevation, what is the slope? So the user is the place of highest slope. And then given the elevation, what is the aspect or the heading, compass heading? Of the so, uh, so we're coloring it by aspect. So that we're, we're doing this because we want to make a watershed model to figure out where water is for the poppies. And if you think of, uh, so we're going to have it rain some random particles. And these particles are basically pointing up based on the aspect and going downhill based on the slope at some speed. So now we have a dynamic simulation running on top of it that's kind of filling in data that we didn't have. In, in a lot of cases, you get a lot of data, but it's sparse, and you need to fill it in with models. As opposed to making these toy models in some virtual world, we're seeing modeling being used to fill in the gaps of data and getting a bigger, consistent picture. And the, and the places where you have modeling, and it's really important, go get new data there to, to fill it out. It tells you where the sensitivity is. So anyway, so now once we have a watershed model, we can start to say, if we knew nothing else, here's where the poppies are. Right? But now if we want to start constraining you know, that it has to have, you know, we know it doesn't grow over a certain elevation, so that, you know, starts to remove our highlands uh, in, in our search problem. We bring the density down here. Uh, we also know that, uh, you know, it has to be on a somewhat flat surface. You know, it can't be on a steep slope, so we're looking at any place where the slope is uh, some bit. And the 
we also know that it has to be a, you know, let me uh, now say, uh, based on water, it has to have a minimum requirement of water. And given that, so here's the places we need to search. So this is the, what the model's telling us, here's what the crowd's telling us, and now we can also put an eye in the sky or getting a citizen request, you know, you could be requesting from a, a kid network over there with any phone, Android or iPhone, to go get you a photo over there. And we get the photos coming over the network, which is what we're trying to demonstrate here. And that camera, by the way, was going over the network, not touching anything with the wire. And that was coming over the cellular network, coordinating with those projectors. That's correct. That's good. It's 10% off today. Uh, so <laughs> 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 Yeah, so it's just, uh, and we uh, use just for weight, we're using just crushed walnut shells. So, but you know, sand's cheap, right? So, right. so it's just projection. And uh, just from, uh, we're working with MITRE to get even the, the form factor down. So Pico projectors, and these are coming down to 100 bucks in solid state. We take a soldier's iPhone or iPod, just so the camera with the front surface mirror is looking at the same place. This is a smart light bulb. You hang this in the tent outside, the, you know, and, and there's a way, so not just this surface, plus there's more weight. Uh, so think of, uh, think of taking a fisheye lens onto an iPhone. Get the spherical geometry of a room back. Why? So that we can basically recreate the planetarium or the cave experience with any non-uniform surface. So this is projecting in the corner of a bedroom. That's uncalibrated, but that could be the tent outside. But now when we use the fisheye in the tent with just a phone, you now have immersive media running through a browser, and you have situational awareness of the soldiers, and it's interactive with a laser pointer or their phones. And you don't have to, you don't have to shovel all that monitors and all the CPUs. And think of air, think of this. Android and iPhone now have AirPlay DLNA. So that means I have a second monitor going to my projector. So, yeah. to so the only thing in the room is an iPad or iPhone and projection. Yeah. No computers. And, and the camera on here is good enough to do everything we're doing here for the sand table. So we can scan the room, get the geometry back, and make it immersive. Everyone could have an inflatable dome in the corner of their hut, and it's all coordinated. Whatever they're drawing. Also, oh, yeah. other things we've done is just projecting on the wall and drawing with a whiteboard. That becomes a GIS thing. They don't have to get a mouse and learn, learn all kinds of stuff. They can just be drawing it. And that now is now real GIS actual information. Yeah. Yeah.